Here at EFA 2019, we've had a fair amount of wearables launches from the names you would expect. You know, Garmin, Withings, Fossil, and even Asus. And all of these companies are promising that their technology will make you fitter, healthier, and happier, more productive. But it got me thinking, what exactly is the future for these devices? In order to understand the future of wearable technology, it's probably worth just recapping how these devices work normally. So, the most basic device, these $30 trackers you can get from the bottom shelf at Best Buy through to, you know, expensive things like the Fitbit and even the Apple Watch all use some kind of motion sensor, be it a, a gyroscope, an accelerometer or a magnetometer or some combination of all three. And basically what they are is they enable the device, let's say the watch on my wrist, to determine the position of my arm in three-dimensional space. And then from there a series of algorithms will do essentially very good guesswork to determine the rest of my body and what I'm doing. So if my arm is straightened down by my side and I'm swaying in you know, a slightly definitive motion, then I'm probably walking. Compare that with this, and they can probably guess that I'm running or jogging or you know, doing some vigorous exercise. Here at EFA, Garmin announced its new Venue smartwatch come fitness tracker and it uses the second most commonly used technology to track your fitness. On the back here you will see this optical heart rate or PPG sensor and it uses pulse oximetry to judge the size of the red blood cells in your blood and from there you can draw lots of very useful conclusions about your body. For instance, how much oxygen you're carrying around, your blood pressure and heart rate, and of course your VO2 max, which is uh, an indicator of your overall fitness. This device also uses that same technology to measure respiration. And what that means is that it can, in its new yoga mode, can actually determine your breathing and by extension, how at one you are with the world. The third and newest of all of these technologies is an ECG. Now both Withings and Asus launched ECG watches here at the show. What this does is it measures the electrical activity of your heart to check whether you're suffering from any life-threatening conditions. So if you're feeling under the weather, you uh, run an ECG from your wrist and it can tell you whether you're suffering from something like atrial fibrillation. And if you are, it'll tell you to get to the emergency room pronto. And there are plenty of things that you can do with some or all of those technologies that can be genuinely beneficial. Apple made a big deal about introducing fall detection to the Apple Watch. It's just using the accelerometer. It's just basically guessing when it thinks you've fallen. There's no great engineering wizardry there. It's just clever algorithms. Same as uh, exercise detection now, a lot of the uh, gyroscopes in these devices are smart enough and sensitive enough to tell the difference from when you're using a rowing machine compared to when you're running. And of course, things like habit forming, the late lamented jawbone really pioneered understanding that if you're still for too long, then it will give you a buzz. And companies like Fitbit do the exact same thing. You set a time and it'll remind you when you're being too sedentary and that'll help you live a slightly more active, slightly healthier life. Here's the problem, and here's where my anxiety really is. You see, those three sensors are gonna get more common to the point where they're in every major fitness device and smartwatch on the market in two or three years. And there aren't that many other technologies that we can branch out into to do the next big thing. There's something like galvanic skin response, which measures the moisture in your skin as a response to stimulus. And there was a Russian company called Healby, which claimed that it could determine how many calories you consumed just by your galvanic skin response. Credit to them. It actually kind of worked. It could tell that you'd eaten, but it couldn't give you the sort of accurate data you'd need to live a healthier life. Similarly, if you really want to investigate your blood, the next thing might just be breaking the skin. That's going to be a legal minefield for manufacturers and a hard sell for consumers. There was one company at CES that promised a watch for diabetics that had microneedles that would burrow into the skin and do continuous blood sugar monitoring. 
there's no indication that that technology is ready and it's going to be a hard sell for anyone who isn't a diabetic. I mean, imagine if Apple launched a watch and they were like, oh yeah, this is going to put loads of needles into your skin. One possible area of focus is with mental health and you know, it's very easy to develop a, a portable EKG which measures the electrical activity in your brain but it's going to be hard to put into a watch and I, I can't imagine this taking off with consumers. And there's a tension here as well because as these devices become more accurate and more pervasive you're going to start worrying about privacy because let's be honest if you don't trust big tech with pictures of your kids do you really want them looking after your medical data? Looking at the way the wind is blowing, it seems fairly obvious that within two or three years a lot of major wearables are going to offer all three of these sensors. And that's great for consumers because it means that everyone will be able to get these sort of devices at fairly low prices. I mean, the Withings Move ECG, it's a hybrid, but even with an ECG it still costs just $130. Now, the commoditization will be great for consumers, but it's going to come at the cost of innovation. Take Apple. Now, it's expected to talk about a new Apple Watch in a couple of days, and people look to Apple to push the industry on. But even that event may simply be about it filling in the gaps in its own hardware that its competitors already have, like sleep tracking. As a consequence, it may be that we're really butting up against the technical limits of what fitness wearables can do. Now, for more information about this and all of the other things we've seen at IFA 2019, head to Engadget.com and don't forget to like and subscribe to us on YouTube.